Hello, it's Gail here from Three Wise Crafters, and welcome to part two of the Spellbinders Glimmering Peonies video series. So in this video, I'm going to be using two ink colors from the Distress range to create different shading on our card project. I'm using the Spellbinders Glimmering Peonies hot foil plate, as well as the coordinating layering stencils. There's five stencils in that series and the Curved Everyday Sentiments Hot Foil Plate. So I have the Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil System already heating up on the side and I'm using the Satin Pewter Glimmer Foil on the Glimmering Peonies Hot Foil Plate today and I'm just measuring that out to be able to place this down on top of our Hot Foil Plate and then I'll allow the glimmer foil system to heat up and run that through the die cutting machine. I'm using the Spellbinders Platinum Extra Large die cutting machine in today's video, but it's off screen just because I don't have enough room on my desk space with the equipment. So what I wanted to create today was a sympathy card using the Distress inks that I've chosen. But the Curved Everyday Sentiments didn't have an appropriate sentiment that I wanted to use. I've got my Distress White Heavy cardstock ready as well, which you just saw. And I'm just taking that over to the die cutting machine and run that through. So once we've removed the plates from our Glimmer Hot Foil system, we can then take off the foil, see how our project has turned out. And I'm really happy with how these the satin pewter foils, it gives a muted finish to your card project, which I thought was appropriate for a sympathy card. So I'm just getting the curved everyday sentiment foil plates ready to place onto our glimmer system. And again, once this is heated up, I'll place down the foil and I'm using the satin pewter glimmer foil again for the sentiments just so that our project coordinates and trim this down to the size that we need and because the foil is oversized for the size of the foil plates I'm just trimming down this side otherwise we risk overfoiling their card project and we don't want to do that it just saves us time having to try and remove overfoiling that we may get so once this is heated up where well, I've run that through the die cutting machine again and we'll be able to see what our sentiments look like so I tend to use distress white heavy stock for all of my projects and this works really well with the Glimmer Hot Foil system as well. I haven't had any issues other than in my first video where I did the unboxing. And that was the first time I'd used the Glimmer system. Since I worked out I don't need to have my cardstock down and the plates down while it's heating up, I've had no overfoiling issues at all and everything's turned out perfectly. So... I've ran our sentiments through the die cutting machine as well with the coordinating die and we end up with a lot of sentiments that we can then use on other cards that we don't use on our card today. So the one that I've chosen to use on today is the birthday wishes. So I'm just setting those aside and I have my Wendy Vecchi make art station out and I'm just going to get ready our stencils. First I'm adhering down our card panel with some non-permanent adhesive tape. I'm just lining up our first stencil and putting that down with some magnets and you'll also see me put down some tape just to give it a bit extra security with holding it the stencil down to our card project as well as the make, a, make art station. I tend to do this all the time just so that our stencil doesn't move and in most of my videos that you'll see along the way I tend to put tape down. So uh, first colour I'm using is Distress Ink Evergreen Bow and I've just 
hastened the video here just so that we get through all the stenciling quickly. But what I'm doing is going in lightly and applying the evergreen bough down on the flowers. I just thought that this gave more of that muted tone that you want with a sympathy card rather than the bright colours that I've been seeing when I look at Instagram and and so forth. I don't like bright colours for sympathy cards. Um, I tend to like those muted colours that seem to be more appropriate to the occasion. But again, it's your choice what colours you use. And this, just because I wanted to do a sympathy card today, doesn't mean that these colours don't work for other cards or that you can't use other car colours with your stencils. As you'll see in the part one video and the upcoming part three, I use very different colours and get very different uh, effects with those colours. So now I'm going in with the bundle stage to do our leaves and you'll see me go back in with the bundled sage over the top of the leaves just to create some shadowing and some highlights and I did that as well with the evergreen bough on the bottoms of the flower which you can see really well on the top left flower as well as the bottom left flower it's a bit harder to see it on the other ones so you can go back in and add as much ink as you want but it's best to go in lightly first and then Go back over your work if you want more colour. You can't take colour off, but you can certainly apply more to your project. So once we're finished with this stencil, I take it off screen and I clean it with some alcohol spray. And I use that to clean all of my stencils. So just laying down stencil two now. And we'll end up doing the same colours. On our flowers, so evergreen bow, distress ink on our flowers, and then we'll this stencil only has flower petals, so we won't be using the bundle saged on this. But again, just going in with a light hand to start with, and then going back in and applying more ink just to create those highlight and shadow effects that you want on your card. So with the rounded flowers that are in the top right and the top bottom, I've tended to put heavier colour down the bottom and up the top of the flower. I just felt that the sun would hit the middle and that was where our highlights would be. I'm not an expert at colouring by any means and I just go with gut instinct. So... Just do what makes you happy. There's no right or wrong and nobody's going to come back to you and say that they don't like your card or that you haven't got the highlights right. Most people are just going to look at your card and think what a wonderful job that you've done and hopefully they'll appreciate it. If they don't appreciate it, maybe you shouldn't be sending them a card. But I really, really like the Distress Inks and I've got some ideas for using these glimmering plates in the stencil again and trying it with the Distress Oxide, especially the cards that I make in the upcoming third video. I really, really like those and I'd really like to see how they turn out. So we're finished with our stencil number two and we're just moving on to stencil number three and again line that up put our magnets down. I haven't put tape down this time and going back in with the same colours. So evergreen, bell, and then with the flowers I will, sorry, with the leaves I will do the bundled stage again. And it is exactly the same process, just going in lightly and then adding a heavier hand as we move along. So every time I finish with the stencil, I clean it on the side. I have a cloth that I use and I use isocol rubbing alcohol, which I just get from my local supermarket. And I find that this cleans the stencils really well and it doesn't matter what color I use. It, even with the pinks and reds, it cleans off the color really well and easy 
And because it's alcohol, it dries straight away. So you can go in and use your stencil on multiple cards if you're making the most of the time that you have and the supplies that you have out to create lots of cards with the same supplies. And that's more time effective if you do that as well. So what I tend to do is make a lot of stenciled cards at the same time and have them sitting aside to make into finished projects. Um, most of the, the time, though, I just end up doing the stenciling and have the card panels finished, but never end up putting them onto a card base and finishing off the card. I just like the process of stenciling. So here we move on to bundled sage, and we just do the same process. Light hand first with applying our ink down, and then we'll go back in and add a bit of shading. So when we finished doing all the stenciling, I was really happy with the finished project. I could have got a sympathy sentiment from another supply, but with these three videos, I wanted to use the same products and just show you that you can create different effects with the same products and with minimal inks. You don't need to have a lot of ink colors to be able to create shading, you can do it with the same ink colours that you have. It's just the amount of pressure that you apply when you're putting your ink down. So you can see here that I've already got some different shading on our card panel. Now I'm going in with our fourth stencil and this stencil will end up doing the some more leaves or the stems of the leaves rather, and the bud, the green parts of the buds, and also the centers of our flowers. So with the centers of the flowers today, I'm using Distress Ink in Scattered Straw. And this, I wanted a more pale yellow, but it ended up being a little bit brighter than what I wanted but I thought that it actually suited the card pretty well, so I was happy with how it turned out. So you'll see the scattered straw in shortly. And just going in, I was trying to apply a heavier hand to the top of the flower bud stems, but I couldn't get the, the tone that I was trying for, but it didn't matter, it still looked good at the end. So now I'm going in with the scattered straw just to do the flower centers. And what I thought you could do was go in with a marker of some kind and you could add in some, say, black dots just to create more of a type of stamen in the, your flower center. But I didn't do that on any of the cards. So now we're on to our last stencil, which is number five. And this is just all completed in bundled sage and just going over all the areas and then I'll go back in and add a little bit of highlight to different areas mostly to the where the leaves join onto the stems and then there's little areas uh, around the flower buds and the flowers themselves and I've just tried to go back into the pointy area of those small leaf types just to add in a little bit of highlight where I can. So once this is completed we're finished with all of our stenciling and we'll be able to move on to putting our sentiment on. So with this card I hadn't decided at the start whether I was doing a 5 by 7 or an A7, depending on which country you live in. And so I had done the whole glimmer foil plate, but you can do the glimmer foil plate to the size of the card that you want your finished card to be. And you then don't have to do as much colouring, but as I enjoy colouring with stencils, I didn't find it too hard to do the whole 
foil plate at, with a stencil. So I'm just going back into those little areas just to try and add a little bit more of colour and highlight. So this can take a little bit of time to do. So let me know in the comments, do you like stenciling? Do you like stamping? What's your favourite technique? And in my projects with the Glimmering Peonies, from Spellbinders, I've used Distress Ink. But what other inks would you use and what colours would you choose? Feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know. I did try to speed up the video just so that you weren't watching as much of me stenciling but I found if I sped it up too much then it it affected my eyes so if it affected my eyes it would affect your eyes and I didn't want that to happen so we're finally finished with a fifth stencil and once I take this off a makeup station you'll be able to see the different shading effect that you get with just using two ink colors and the scattered straw for the centers of our two flowers that needed it. So we're, now I decided to cut the card down to an A2 size and I used the Hero Arts Rectangle Infinity dies to do this and I used the largest die. So I ended up choosing from our sentiments the Birthday Wishes and I'll put down double-sided tape on the back of our card panel and I've sped this up as well. We all know how to put tape down. So I put down four strips of the double-sided sticky tape and then I'll go over this once I've removed the backing panels off our double-sided tape and I'll put down Gina K Connect Glue just so that we've got a bit of wriggle room when we put our card panel down on our card base. And for the card base, I'm using Nina Solar White 110 pound. And I have this in a side folded card. That's what we tend to use here in Australia and I tend to stick with that even though I, I mostly use American products in my cards. So as you can see I'm just putting down the glue here and then I'll stick that onto our card base. So I find lining up one corner first and then letting the card panel fall down onto your card base helps with positioning it and because you've got the glue on, if it's off center a little bit, you can just move it easier than if you'd use the double sided sticky tape. And as you can see here, I'm just mute, moving my card panel a little bit just to line it up a bit better. So with the sentiment, I've got foam squares and I'm just going to put these onto the back of our sentiment. And then I'm going to position this onto our card. And once I've done that, our card is finished. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure that you watch part one, which I'll link in the description below. And make sure that you come back to watch part three of the series. There will be some bonus cards at the end that I have done off screen as well. And make sure that you hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with all future videos and follow us on social media. The links will be in the description below as well. Uh, most of the updates are posted on Facebook, so it'd be good to see you there too. Thank you for watching the video.